How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do materials order, it's on my second playthrough and uh, yeah I'm going to go and take a modded truck and actually do a mission, see how that goes. Um, that's the route I'm going to take, go down to the farm, back over to that warehouse, cut across the map. I could get metal beams from that uh, like place in the town but because I'm going to take an 8 slot trailer I don't think it will get through there very well so uh, yeah I'm going to pick them up from the warehouse, travel across to Smithville and then uh, yeah go and drop some stuff off. And for this one, yeah, I'm taking this big heavy wrecker because, to be honest, I quite like messing around with it. Um, I wanted to see how well it does on just a normal mission, really, with an 8 slot as well. I've got the uh, heavy wrecker mod and the trailer mods, like the off-road versions of the trailers, which are pretty cool. So, yeah, of course, we're bringing a goddamn professional with us. And we'll uh, go. I assume this would be pretty easy. I've got the uh, wrecker tuned up like... Basically, it's OP version, it's got the OP engine, etc. Although in this configuration, it is quite light at the minute, because, like, again, when you have that wrecker body, that does add uh, quite a lot of weight to it. <laughs> that little bit there is always a bit, a bit slippy, but we're all good. It will take quite a bit of damage on the way. That's not really this truck's fault or problem, it's just the, yeah, the way with the damage mechanics. I kind of wish they'd just put it back to how it was. Like when the first, uh, when the game first came out, I thought the damage mechanics were pretty good. They sort of seemed they were at a point where you could take your time and not take damage, or you could rush and take damage but take a trailer with you, etc. Yeah, these days it's just you're going to take damage regardless, unless you're in something that goes just two mile an hour the whole way. So I can't complain too much. That's what got me uh, used to bringing a goddamn horse or vehicle with me. Couldn't resist that to cut. I've got to go back basically to the garage, so thought I'd go this way, smashing trees down. This thing, uh, yeah, no issues smashing through them. Good times. All things considered, as well, for the eight slot trailer, um, this thing's got enough power that most of the time, if you're kind of catching it on, it's just with a trailer this size, there's like in real life. If you had to take a trailer this size down some of these tracks, they'd have to make it like the trailer has steerable wheels, otherwise you just wouldn't get... You can't get around certain corners, it's just too long. <laughs> don't know what she said. Um, yeah, so at least this thing, though, has got enough sort of oomph to it that it'll kind of... Whatever you hit on the inside, it just kind of flicks the trailer around and, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. You'll kind of see later on, I'm definitely I'm pretty much done on this game as far as uh, ramped flatbeds and stuff without bloody sideboards. I mean, this trailer obviously being an exception at the minute, but because this is a uh, semi-trailer, it kind of locks onto the fifth wheel pretty well and doesn't tip that badly unless you're tipping yourself. The ramped flatbed, uh, yeah, later on, <laughs> just trolls the crap out of me at the end of this mission. I kind of cut most of it out because you'll get the gist of it. <laughs> There's no point in leaving like another 15 or 20 minutes of footage in just for, yeah, watching a ramped flatbed tip over and be a dick the whole time. That's one thing I do like about this trailer as well, even though it's an 8 slot, you get that extra little ledge at the front where the loaf is, and that doesn't eat into your, uh, yeah, the amount of cargo you can hold or anything, so it's just kind of like a little free spot to bring them along, and especially now you can pack vehicles, the, uh, yeah, it hangs on there like a good one. I've been, uh, was it on the summer proving grounds, flying around with stuff packed on the, uh, very, like, rollbacks or trailers or whatever, and, uh, yeah, unless you tip, they pretty much ain't coming off once the vehicle's packed. So like I said, I'm going to go over to here, grab a uh, metal beams, again it's just, yeah, that place in town, it's a bit of a tight squeeze getting round like, it's just, there's a lot of lampposts and all the rest of it, and uh, yeah, I just thought before I even get there, and this thing gets locked in the buildings, and then I have to go and drive all the way back and grab another trailer, I'll just, uh, I'll do it this way, I knew this thing's got enough power and everything, that it was, you know, pretty easy, pretty simple, it's been nice though, because again, I could still tune this down and calm it down, but... I've also got the option, the high range, it's not, it's fast enough, it's nice in high range, but I mean, it's not absolutely, you know, tearing off down the road. Um, I've also got the high low, so I've got lower gearing options if I want to go a bit more relaxed, but um, yeah, given that we've been playing the game for eight or nine months, it's just nice to have a change and have something that's, if anything, more power than it needs. So I have kind of been, yeah, enjoying that aspect of it. 
you can see there when I turn around, like it just kind of yanked the trailer around that corner. Whereas a lot of other trucks kind of run out of juice. That was my fault there. I was I just realised my uh, markers on the map. I hadn't drove through in the proper way, but I just let off the accelerator and everything right as I went over that hill. And uh, yeah, just got conveniently reminded that this eight slot, as much as it is a pretty cool trailer, it just it sits very low. It needs like a set of wheels in the middle or nearer to the legs, or they need to however they program the trailer, like make the legs not catch, because that um, there's like a five slot trailer that's a little bit like this, and that seems to like, the frame of the trailer acts more like skids, so even if you uh, sort of beach it on the brow of the hill, it just kind of skids along, this thing absolutely like, the legs just dig in, and they're pretty much hooked in the terrain, it doesn't really matter to a degree how much power you've got. Yeah, going for a little bit of interior view. Can't really see a whole lot out the back at the minute, but it's. I think if anything, it's more yeah the exhausts, exhaust stacks are in the way a little bit. Not that it really matters. I, like this view's fine to me. <laughs> Rarely look behind me. That's not my problem anymore. Just got to flee the scene. That <laughs> was my fault trying to get a good old look at the truck. Again though, one nice thing with this, every little option you put on it's got all sorts of repair points and everything. I've got the uh, sleeper cab, which I believe that's what I'm using now, that gives you like a hundred repair points, which is handy, because even though it's only a hundred, it's enough if you break your suspension etc, just to physically repair it and get it all like bumped back up. Uh, I've also got the toolbox or something behind the sleeper cab. Uh, yeah, I've brought the crane with me. These cranes are yeah, they're pretty crap. I don't think it's any crapper than the normal cranes, I just mean like... It stands out quite a lot as being pretty crap on this truck, because pretty much everything about this truck is bloody good, except, yeah, this crane and the uh, Russian crane, the blue one, they just have absolutely no guts to them. When they're fully extended, they can barely lift their own boom arm, let alone, like, be lifting cargo or something. Which you'll uh, see me, yeah, again, trolling me a bit later on when the cargo uh, flies off one of the ramp flatbeds. So I fancied cutting across here, because I've, I've came through here before in uh, various other vehicles. My Navistar did pretty well through here. I can't remember what the other thing was I brought. Something else didn't do very well. This thing, as predicted, muscled through there pretty nicely. I think for the tyres, by the way, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure they're like the special edition MUDs or whatever. They're not an OP version. I don't think there is a hell of a lot of difference in them. These like, are nice tyres as well. quite like the uh, big, wide, sort of chunky ones, rather than the set of jewels. Uh, yeah, you can see now with the trailer, it's just caught on yeah, the brow of that hill. And uh, all the power in the world ain't really going to do a lot about it. Another nice thing with this truck, I believe it's more with the OP engine, because as you can see with the fuel usage, it only uses like 0 0.8 to a litre a minute or something. Even when you damage the tank, because it's got a 500 litre fuel tank, you have actually like still got time if you know what I mean you can sort of ignore it even with the suspension when that collapses as well to be fair it's um, yeah it doesn't really reduce what you're able to do with it obviously you probably take a little bit more wheel damage and all the rest of it but again <laughs> that's not my problem I can just recover it fix it and we're all good yeah I was kind of making up the route as I'm going along here but basically head into Smithville Dam now. I just needed to find a way. I was going to cut through the drilling site and go uh, through the river that way, but I remember on the other side there is quite a trollish brow of a hill. If I had one of the smaller trailers, like the five-slot semi-trailer or whatever, I'd probably be fine, but yeah, this thing, as I said, it uh, tries to find every little bump and hill it can and dig into it, so I won't push me up too much. So this isn't in high gear now. It ticks along. It's quite a nice speed. Like, it's not insane, it's not, doesn't feel like it's a, yeah, something that's been dialed up to just unrealistic levels, it sort of ticks along pretty nicely in that situation. I'd say one of the most unrealistic feelings of this truck isn't even necessarily this truck itself, it's because it's fast enough to go a pretty high speed, the game mechanics themselves kind of start acting a bit odd. 
or not odd, but you know, when you go pretty fast in this game, you start just sliding and skidding around as if you're driving on black ice or whatever, and it doesn't really matter what tyres you've got or anything, it just seems to be any truck you go over, yeah, you start getting up to like top speed in 8th out of 8th gear or whatever, and they uh, start going all over the place, and that, like I said, that's about the the only times it feels a little bit unrealistic, and that's not this truck's fault, that's what happens with with everything. Yeah, there's the bit through town where you like could cut through, obviously I just stayed a, a straight on the road, you see how bad it was just getting around there with the uh, lamp post and everything. I always have to kill that tree. Habit. Habit and tradition. Yeah, I did try and attempt the uh, doing the smaller wrecker, doing a review on that tonight, but for some reason, like my, my granddad lives out in the flat below me, and I don't know why, but every now and then his radiators, they, they sound like a foghorn is the only way I can explain it. They start vibrating, and they sound pretty bloody loud, and it was happening at like 1, 2 in the morning. It was happening about every 40 minutes, so... I was kind of like just messing around with the wrecker but slowly sort of getting the footage and uh, yeah that kept going off, kept nipping down there to try and adjust the radiators, get it to stop or whatever. Tried bleeding them before, it's it's not that, I don't know what the hell it is. But yeah, so in the end I kind of went for uh, this kind of mission and uh, yeah, it gave me a chance to actually test one of the mods out, uh, just doing a normal mission and everything. And then yeah, I was, I was down there this morning just opening my mouth or get them out of bed and everything. So yeah, apologies, I've not been able to uh, reply to the comments in yesterday's video. But I have been reading through them, and that obviously the main situation is this whole uh, Super Boron Grad thing, and that message you put at the end. It may well, it appears, be sarcasm in the end, but yeah, I would say, well, best case scenario, it's pretty poor judgement on his part, because he's added the mod, if he obviously hasn't then intended to break people's money and whatever, it's like, regardless, that has happened. It's messed a lot of people's games up, and it's like, just take the responsibility and go, yeah, I'm genuinely sorry, obviously didn't mean to, for that to happen, and that's it, just let it be, but it's like, then when you put a sarcastic comment like that, it's kind of like, it's not funny though, to people who have just lost tens to hundreds of hours of their main playthrough. Uh, yeah, because of a glitch, and if you're just kind of, kind of brush it off as like, and just get sarcastic about it, it just doesn't, yeah, it leaves a bit of a bad taste in people's mouths um, and I'm sure no doubt it's the internet like I'm sure he's got a lot of flack for it but um, yeah you just gotta take the hit I mean if I made a YouTube video and it somehow deleted everybody's YouTube accounts and you know videos they'd uploaded and all sorts I'd be getting a load of flack and it's just one of them you gotta like take the responsibility and say yeah sorry so he certainly not helped himself with that situation when I originally got on the game I at first I was thinking like is it sarcasm because it's a little bit, not too good to be true, but it's too blatant. But then, a few hours after I turned the game on, if that, like, the amount of negatives getting on the Super War on Grad started flying up. Quite, like, a lot of trucks and stuff that works pretty well in this game is, like, mid to high 90s with the percent of likes to dislikes. That, I think, started going down into the 80s, and then they removed it, and then it, I was sort of thinking, oh, he, like, he might be serious, or, well, the they've added the Super Bowl run and then they've removed it hours later. There were some people still saying about the uh, winch thing where it was bugging their money, so yeah, overall he's just like, he's really not helped himself if that's the situation. So I personally would still uh, avoid the Super Bowl on Grad if it's still on anyone's list. I've seen earlier they've just added some more mods in the last couple of hours and one of them is a free money thing and it's by the same modder and uh, yeah, if I'm honest I wouldn't want to use it now at the minute because I don't know, it's just one of them, it's like, I'd rather stay clear now, you've kind of shot yourself in the foot a bit as far as wanting to use them goes. I mean, especially considering this whole mod situation and the update, a lot of people have had crashing games, losing trucks and all sorts, so everyone's already a little bit on edge as far as mods go, and then someone sticking a message in like that, it's like, you've seriously just, yeah. If you thought the internet was pissed off at you before, <laughs> putting something like that really doesn't help the situation, so probably best to just uh yeah for me personally anyway like i'm just gonna avoid them for now and we'll see later down the line maybe when they've uh yeah been through enough trial runs and they seem safe then maybe but fortunately the bug didn't get me i'd certainly be a lot more unimpressed if it had i have to say though and this isn't really to uh related to that as such but as far as people 
have had various different bugs since the update. Uh, a couple of people have said they're just not going to bother playing the game anymore. I'm not saying this is in it's a good thing, because I'm glad my playthrough hasn't glitched, but given like the nervousness with mods, I downloaded another one tonight and I ended up getting a glitch and I had to back up my save data and all the rest of it. Um, and it all went fine again after that, but since they've added the mods, I've barely used any stock trucks I ever had, apart from what I've been bringing a loaf for me, as I usually do. Um, yeah, you kind of... You're probably not missing out on as much as you think, because you, you'll probably just end up messing around with the mods and enjoying them, and it's like... By the time you've finished messing around with them, you can sort of do some money glitches and whatever and build your uh, playthrough back up, so... I mean, yeah, what I'm saying, it's more making the best of a bad situation. As I said, I wouldn't personally want to choose it happening to me. But at the same time, if it has happened to you and it's been forced upon you, then they've kind of taken away the stress for you of having worrying about mods now breaking something. But like, I'm still on edge quite a lot because I've still got a hundreds of hours playthrough that I don't want to get bugged and lose, but... If it had already gone, it's kind of like, oh well, I've got nothing to lose now, I can just download whatever mods, if it crashes, it crashes. So, yeah, like I said, best of bad situation, but the mods are pretty cool, they're pretty fun, and as I said, I've not really used anything stock like or that came with the game for, I don't know, since mods came out, pretty much. Or, at least since I was able to access them, anyway, I was stuck on the uh, email menu for a day or two. So yeah, I think that's about up to speed on the uh, whole situation. Like I said, there is more mods in there and I'll be testing them out pretty soon. It was just, yeah, one of those sort of days today where it got a bit ahead of me. But I, I was wanting to do this kind of mission. I knew it'd uh, sort of go pretty easily. You can see now with this bloody ramped flatbed. Basically, I went to the garage and I switched from the 8 slot to this because... I remember ages ago when they first added the 8 slot, somebody said it doesn't get round that corner on the dam. And I knew I'd have to cross the dam, so I thought before I even get there, get wedged and then have to recover and everything. I'll try and be smart about it and uh, yeah, I'll switch trailers, move the uh, metal beams over to this and go there. And then this thing just started tipping every bloody five minutes. And uh, yeah, it's the off-road version of the trailer. I was going to say, though, that's fine. It's nothing to do with like that it's the off-road version. I remember they used to tip like crazy just anyway. Compared to uh, semi-trailers, like I said, when it locks in the fifth wheel... It keeps the trailer basically as horizontal as you are. This thing with the uh, trailer hitch the way it is, especially that it's got those stupid wheels at the front that wiggle around as well. It can kind of get itself into a situation where even if you just slam on the brakes hard, it kind of skids up behind you, twists the axle, twists the hitch to the side and then spoons you over like it's nearly trying to there. So uh, yeah, from now on I'll just be sticking probably <laughs> to the semi-trailers or something. Of course, slight stubbornness, I wanted to uh, bring the loaf and get the rollback. The rollback, even this little mini rollback, has got like a thousand repair points with it, which is pretty damn cool. So, uh, yeah, I brought a four slot instead, and I'll probably <laughs> regret my decision. So, let's drop the metal beams off, and then, uh, oh yeah, I don't need anything from here. That's the cargo thing, I need, yeah, concrete slabs, which are just back across the bridge. Uh, a little warehouse. Nice thing is, this thing gets out of here pretty easily. I've used this route before, but some of the weaker trucks just can't. They ain't got enough umph to get up there. And this thing, it, I thought it might be close because it might beach itself, but it didn't. It, uh, yeah, motored up there pretty nicely. And that's another thing as well, doing the playthrough. I mean, I'm now back on like my second playthrough because I've not really got a lot of missions left on my main playthrough, so... That's sort of another thing as well for a lot of people that have completed those things. At least you've got the missions back, which would be quite nice. That's one thing I certainly would reset if they added the option just to reset the missions in my first playthrough. I'd, uh, yeah, I'd most likely do it. Well, I would, in fact. <laughs> just give me something else to mess around with. The only thing that I would be pissed off with losing is, yeah, all my trucks, all my money. Uh, the money's replaceable, to be fair, with glitches. It's more all my truck, all the, you know, the effort I've gone through to accumulate all those trucks. I'd be, uh, yeah, sad to see them go. But, as well, I sort of look at it, it's like, you've already paid for the game 
sort of don't let their I don't know ineptitude in some ways as far as like this surprise update crashing a load of stuff don't let it take away from your fun it's like yeah they're not losing anything if you stop playing but you are losing potential fun and messing around by doing it so yeah I'm st I still get it I understand it but again it's just sort of try and make the best of a bad situation and uh yeah enjoy what you got there is a lot of mods that are pretty damn cool and offer a lot more than pretty much all the base trucks anyway other than a goddamn professional of course he's still number one <laughs> he still gets the job done So up to now, things were going... Well, I, I did tick was it twice so far with this trailer, which is not the end of the world. The big thing, like I said, is the crane, and because of the length of this truck and then the trailer's that far behind it, if I pick the cargo up, I can't reach back to the uh, trailer from here, or it'll like, eventually get there, but the cargo's too heavy and it'll just drop to the floor, so you can't actually get it up on the trailer. Um, in the end, I was kind of reversing... At a right angle and trying to scoot the trailer around as close to me as I could, but uh, yeah, I'd have been better off really, I suppose, with a wrecker add on that crane is great. Like that works exactly how, uh, yeah, how how I'd want a crane to work. I was almost doing like a little Jeff special there. Yeah, you can see now the fuel tank's gone, but it's still, I mean, counting down on the fuel thing, but because there's plenty in there, it's uh, still got a lot of time. The fuel tank doesn't have a lot of damage or a lot of health or whatever, but it's probably not a bad thing because if you're going to smash it to zero points anyway, you're probably better off just the fact that I think it only takes like 70 points, but at least that's the most you can damage it, and then you don't have to instantly repair it, so in some ways it's probably better that it's got yeah quite low points so going up that hill though I think I'm sure it was then it um, it wasn't just racing up to 8th gear so there is like a limit to the power in this and I, I think that in a good way uh, yeah this is now where it starts to get seriously trollish obviously my impatience levels <laughs> were rising quite a bit so that really wasn't helping cutting various bits out now. I'd already loaded the cargo onto the trailer and it tipped, so now I'm doing it again. You see you have to kind of lunge the cargo in the air, and then it drops down because it can't handle it, and then it knocked that one off. Not really? And then, I thought, right, I'll uh, knock the loaf off. The rollback can hold two slots of cargo. Go down to pack cargo. What? And then it steals my bloody cargo. <laughs> it didn't even didn't even delete it, it just vanished into nowhere. It didn't even bring that like X up that you get before you have the chance to delete cargo. Uh, yeah, I was only trying to load it on the bloody rollback because the crane was too weak to reach the trailer. So I was just like, sod it, I'll use the rollback. So as you can see now, impatience levels were dialed up slightly. I was uh, in a little bit more of a rush than usual, considering I was like mere seconds away from completing the mission. It was a good chance to test, I suppose, just absolutely nail this thing flat out and see what see what happens. Again, I'm not really knocking this truck for it, because I'm going to guess that they basically sort of copied and pasted the winches over... Uh, not the winches, sorry, the cranes over, and yeah, the cranes are just terrible. Like I said, the wrecker crane they've made is brilliant. It lifts a club in the air, so that's like, you can't ask for any more, whereas this thing's... Um, yeah, if it was made of wet spaghetti, it could probably <laughs> lift more. And of course, in this game, the more your impatience rises, <laughs> the more the game starts trolling you, and then it just gets worse and worse. I'm going for some Tokyo Drift. All right, all right, you crack on. <laughs> you do whatever you like, truck. I've got enough repair points. I'll make it regardless. Sort of a little winch trick to fling you around the corner. Oh yeah, this is the trailer. As I say this is roughly the 5 slot version of the 8 slot I was using. Yeah, this thing when you catch it on the brow of a hill, you can see like the frame underneath the trailers just acts like skids and they uh, 
I suppose where the legs are are so close behind your truck that they don't really have a chance to dig in anywhere. So it, yeah, it just acts like a skid and it's uh, pretty good. Rarely, if ever, get this thing stuck. <laughs> Still, impatience mode use the winch to fling me around the corner. Not even got time to enjoy the views anymore. <laughs> We're on a mission. More Tokyo Drift on the way back. <laughs> More trollet. I was like, you dare. You dare flip now. I'll find a way to uh, blow the dam up. So the wheels take a bit of damage now. The suspension's gone, but... I mean, none have blown up yet, so it's all good. I mean, that's one nice thing about this truck. When impatience levels do rise, you can just stick it in auto. <laughs> Make, keep tapping L1 until you get to 8th out of 8th, and then it kind of... catches up a bit to where you're kind of settling down, like, okay. <laughs> I'm, uh... Yeah, at least with normal trucks in this situation, if that had happened to me, you know, it'd have, like, a lot longer onto the mission just to fly down there. You can see again though, I'm sure it's up this hill, yeah, it's not just automatically going up into 8th out of 8th and flying off like a lunatic, so... It has a limit, but it's just when you've got it, like, particularly in this setup, without the wrecker and everything on, it... It's a lot lighter than it can handle. And then now, anyway, this is definitely <laughs> bordering on my fault now. I tried to kill that tree, because it annoyed me earlier on. Um, yeah, I crashed, tried to load the loaf on, just so I was looking down on the list which is packed truck, the loaf slipped off. And I deleted the bloody cargo again. I was like, oh my god. What's getting punched first? The PlayStation on the TV. And then, went to attach a winch to the loaf. And was like, holy mother of god. I don't even know where my winch point is, but... I haven't got the uh, thumb strength to scroll through six million points. So, drove the loaf right up the trailer's arse. Like, is that close enough? <laughs> Sorry, loaf. Loaf's goddamn professional. He knows we're in a rush. He'll take the hit. Yeah, you can see the crane looking at it it's like a bloody wet noodle. Done. <laughs> I think the load's kind of scooting the trailer around there. Sort of a byproduct of the way I've got it winched from the side. Again, <laughs> crane nearly snapped off. Anyway, that's about it for today, though. Hopefully I'll be back uh, pretty soon with a review. But yeah, for today, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself a record and a loaf, and I'll be back soon.